All right, a little continuation on graphing linear equations. Remember, a linear equation is an equation that gives us a line. And we've already talked about two different ways of graphing linear equations. We talked about uh, the slope equation, or a two-point form. If we're given two points, then we can use this formula to figure out their slope. And we can use the slope to figure out other points on that line and eventually draw a line. We also talked about slope-intercept form. Slope-intercept form. Um, if we know the slope and we know where it crosses the y-axis, well then we can figure out the rest of the line. We also talked about standard form, and in standard form, we're able to get two points out of that equation, put them on a graph, connect them with a the line, and then we can use that to figure out the slope, and put other points on the same line. So the last one we're going to talk about, the fourth and final way to write an equation and graph it, is called point-slope form. In point-slope form looks like this. y minus y1 equals slope m times x minus x1, or an x-coordinate. So for example, if I'm given a point or a coordinate pair, like 3, 4, and I'm given a slope of, let's say, one-third. That's enough to graph using this form right here. So all we got to do is fill in what we know. Remember that in the coordinate pair, this is our x value, so that's going to be our x1. This is our y value, that's going to be y1. Now we have all the information we need to plug it into this equation. So we don't need y, but we do have y1, and that's 4. And we know our slope is one-third. That x we don't need, but we got this x1 right here, and that's 3. Now we basically have enough information here to draw a line. And if we put a point at 3, 4, because we know that's a location, we're given it right there. Um, we can use the slope to figure out the rest of the line. Up 1 over 3. 1, 2, 3. There's another point on our line. If we run out of room on the top, we can do our slope backwards. So instead of going up, we're going to go down. And instead of going right 3, we're going to go left 3. You can always tell if you're doing it right if your dots are lining up the way they should be. Down 1 over 3. Down 1 over 3. That's plenty there. Oops. Let's try and draw it a little straighter. There's our line. So just knowing a point and a slope, we can draw a line. We could also take this equation a little bit further, just to check it. We're going to put this in slope-intercept form. So let's continue to solve for it. I'll rewrite it right here. If you remember how to distribute or multiply something outside parentheses by everything inside, then we can go ahead and solve this. Let's keep that left side over there for now. One third times x, well, we just combine those and we get one third x. And one third times negative three, if you remember how to multiply fractions, this is what we're multiplying. Whole numbers always get one as the denominator, and we multiply straight across. So 1 times negative 3 is negative 3, and 3 times 1 is 3, and to reduce negative 3 divided by 3 is just negative 1. So we get negative 1 over there. Now let's take care of this negative 4. We just want y by itself in slope-intercept form. We want y equals mx plus b. This is what we're trying to get here. y equals mx plus b. So we need to undo this subtraction of 4 to get y by itself. Well, to undo a subtraction by 4, we need to add 4 to both sides. And you just combine it with your like terms over here on the right. So y equals 
1 third x plus negative 1 plus 4 is positive 3. Here's our equation of the same line, but this is in slope intercept form. Well, let's check it to make sure we're right. This is our y intercept, the positive 3, that's where it should cross the y axis. Well, at 1, 2, 3 on the y axis, it certainly crosses it right there. And 1 third is our slope to get to the other ones. 1, 1, 2, 3. There it is. 1, 1, 2, 3. So it checks out in either form. All right, so that's all four different forms of writing equations. What happens if you see a graph first and you have to write the equation of it? Let's say we're given a graph. Let's say say this is what we are looking at and we're asked to write the equation of this line. Well the things we need are a y-intercept, we need to know where it's crossing the y-axis, and we need a slope. Those are the two things we need. Well it crosses the y-axis at 1, 2, 3, 4. So remember we're going to use this form y equals mx plus b b is the y-intercept where it crosses the y-axis so we write positive 4 at the end and then as long as we have two points on our line we could always figure out the slope well here is a point right here and here's a point so let's count the rise over the run how much does it rise one two three positive three how much does it run one two three four so here's our slope, 3 fourths. And all we got to do is put this x variable here and the y variable there. Say y equals slope plus the y intercept. And now we've written the equation of this line. Well, what happens if we're given a line and it doesn't cross the y axis um, that we know of? So this is the line we're given, and right now it's not crossing the y-axis, but it could be. Well, the way to check to see what the y-intercept is, is to use the slope and to put other points on the line, or extend the line farther using the slope. Let's figure out what the slope is on this line. Remember, rise over run. So what's the rise from this point to this point? Well, it's dropping or falling, so we know that our slope is negative. And it's dropping how many? Well, 2. So negative 2 is the rise. And the run, well, it only goes over once. So negative 2 over 1 is our slope. Or we could just say negative 2. Um, and we could also extend that using that slope. So down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1. Here's 10. There's 11 and 12 is going to be down here. You could extend all these boxes. You could draw as much as you want here. So down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1 is going to put us at 13, right? If we continue that line all the way down. But it's negative 13 on the y, it's below 0. So our y intercept is negative 13. Well, now we have everything we need. We have our slope and our y-intercept. Let's plug it into our equation. y equals, always start with y equals. The slope comes next, negative 2. And the slope always has an x attached to it in our equation. And then we finish it off with the y-intercept, negative 13. And there's our equation for this line. So if you need to write an equation of a line, always find the y-intercept and the slope. And if you need to extend your line, use a known slope or one that you can figure out to extend that line. Or just visualize it and think about where it's going to cross that x, or I'm sorry, where it's going to cross your y-axis if the line continued down. And then you're able to write your equation. All right couple more things to talk about real quick in this video <clears throat> let me clear all this out here come up with a new blank page 
We're going to talk about uh, horizontal lines and vertical lines. Let's start with a horizontal line. Horizontal lines have special equations, and the more you memorize what their slopes and their equations are, it's a lot easier. You have to do far less work. A horizontal line is a line that goes from left to right. So let's say that we have a line going right here. Well, y, what value is y? y is 2, right? That's where it's crossing. So if you just write what the y value is where our horizontal line crosses the y-axis at positive 2, that's the equation of a horizontal line. It's that easy. Just figure out where it's going to cross the y-axis and write y equals that value, and that's the equation of a horizontal line. And if we think about slopes, of horizontal and vertical lines, we could think about it this way. Rise over run always gives us our slope, right? Well, it does a horizontal line go up or down? No, it doesn't. So the rise value is zero. And the run value, well, is going to continue on forever depending on how big our line is. So we could say it's infinite. doesn't even matter how far our line continues in both directions. could go on forever. Even infinity can't go into zero. So zero divided by infinity, zero divided by any number, even infinity is zero. Simplified, right? So a horizontal line has a slope of zero every time. So if you can memorize that, it helps a whole bunch. But if you can't memorize it, you could always go back to, well, what's the rise over the run? Well, it doesn't rise, so zero divided by anything is zero. So that's a horizontal slope and the equation. Vertical lines, vertical lines um, look like this. They go up and down. And they cross x axes. So, where does it cross the x axes? Well, this particular one crosses it at negative 5. So, x equals negative 5. So there's a difference there. It's not a y equals, it's an x equals because it's crossing the x-axis this time. And that's the equation of a vertical line. It's that easy. x equals negative 5. Wherever our line crosses the x-axis, say x equals that value, and you have your equation of a vertical line. And the slope is going to be slightly trickier. Remember, rise over run. So how much does a vertical line rise? Well, it goes up or down forever, basically. So an infinite amount. But does it run? Does it ever go left or right? Vertical lines never run. They never go left or right. So their run is always zero. And any time we have a fraction or a ratio with zero in the denominator, we say that that fraction or that ratio is undefined. It's not possible to divide by nothing. That doesn't make any sense. So we always say that those are undefined. Even if we're not talking about a slope, this could just be a fraction that we're figuring out. Anytime we get zero in the denominator, instantly we all of a sudden have an undefined equation or fraction or ratio. In this case, we have an undefined slope. So vertical lines have undefined slopes. And if you can memorize that, it makes it a lot easier but you could also just go back to your rise over run and think about what well, does it run? No, so a zero in the denominator is undefined. All right, so that's it for this video. We got, I think, one more to do as far as graphing. Maybe, maybe not. We'll find out in the next video.